get hit! Welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. We have a new tech tree line coming up, and we have a new game mechanic, and we have a new release mechanic. So I'm rather excited to take a first look at these sort of things. I don't think where I don't think it's going to be out at the time I'm going to be making the video, but uh, depending on when I release it, it'll be relatively soonish, I guess. Probably in an event, like for a new tech tree, but I, I don't know. Hard works. Anyway, as you probably have guessed from the completely inconspicuous massive ass flag painted on the side of the ship here, these are Spanish cruisers. And uh, we had a Spanish cruiser previously, that was the Canarias. And uh, the Canarias was a good, an interesting ship at tier 6, but uh, we are now getting a set of actual tech tree cruisers in the game. That is at tier one, <laughs> the uh, Jupiter. Uh, we've got the Navarra at tier three, the uh, Galicia at tier five, the Asturias at tier seven, and the Andalusia at uh, Andalusia, I think it is, at tier nine. Sorry, I'm still practicing uh, how to pronounce these, na these Spanish names properly there. Uh, I do t tend to get confused with Italian pronunciations. Anyway, um, I think most of these in the higher tiers uh, didn't exist. The Asturias definitely didn't exist because the last uh, Spanish, or the, the only Spanish heavy cruiser that was, uh, that was actually constructed was uh, the Canarias by the time of World War II. And uh, let's go through them uh, very quickly and see what these ships are, what these ships are doing. Now, obviously, the tier one and tier three are not really that interesting. Uh, tier five is where it gets kind of interesting. And uh, we are getting sonar. Hang on, Terry. I thought you said there was a new game mechanic. Yeah, hang on. I'll, we'll get to that. It's not there yet at tier five. You don't get it at tier five. But uh, for now, we just get we just get the sonar. And I will do a, an explicit uh, Galicia review. So I'm not going to go into any more details. Uh, we don't know yet what the tier six is looking like because we only get the odd tiers right now. Uh, we have the Asturias at tier seven which is getting sonar, a defensive AA, and a scout plane, interestingly enough. And here is your, uh, you see those three, <laughs> I don't know what they're supposed to be, three three shells or something? I think so, because it's it's meant to be like a rapid fire mechanic. Anyway, it's called, called the burst fire mechanic. And what happens is, uh, what happens is effectively, and it doesn't make that quite clear in the description here, um, you fire, you, you get two salvos out in very rapid succession, but in return you get a very long reload uh, until you can shoot again. I'll just demonstrate you how that works in a minute. I just want to go, go through a little further. So the Asturias is kind of the first interesting ship that we're seeing, and it's also a very big ship, but uh, com compared to the Canarias, <laughs> it's a massive ship. Uh, and these are heavy cruisers. So uh, the Galicia still is a light cruiser, but the Asturias is a heavy cruiser with 203 millimeter guns. 
And we'll be playing in the Asturias later. And uh, the Andalusia is uh, a super cruiser with 234 millimeter guns at tier 9. Right, but uh, let us explore probably what you're most interested in and the new make the new game mechanic and for that i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go into a training room so i can demonstrate that so let's head in there because it took me it took me a moment to figure out how this actually works so <laughs> the the first couple of test games i was utterly confused about this because it's not it's not quite it's not quite as as trivial as it sounds because this mechanic, and we'll see the button in a minute, so this mechanic gets a new button. It's right here under the uh, under the shell selection. And uh, this is a toggle. So right now it's off. So if I'm firing the guns now, uh, we have like an odd, like a nine odd second reload on those guns. And um, we have this toggle here. So if I flip this toggle, even while the guns are reloading, nothing happens. You see, it takes about a second to flip. So if I'm firing, and even if I'm if I'm uh, while I'm reloading, nothing happens. But now that I have enabled this feature, I will get. So previously we had a nine second reload. So now if I'm firing the guns, uh, observe what happens. So I'm I'm doing a single salvo tap, and there goes the second salvo. And now I have a twenty odd second reload, and the toggle is still on. So uh, so once that's reloaded, if I fire again, it'll do the same thing. It'll fire two salvos, but with a much extend with an actually longer reload than if you had fired the individual salvos. So each salvo individually takes what what nine seconds on uh, to reload, and I had a um, probably about two two or three second longer reload if I do the if I do the rapid fire mechanic. So I can switch that on and off at any time. It just takes a second to to enable or disable. So now it's on. And now it's off. So this mechanic uh, allows you to to rapidly fire two salvos after each other at the price of cumulatively long, taking longer to reload. So this is an extremely situational mechanic. So you, you wouldn't be usually using this. But let's say, for example, I'm sailing at this island there, right? So let's imagine that uh, that, that's, that innocent island over there is a very nasty ship. So... Uh, my guns are about to reload and I am about to sail behind the island. So I know already that I'm not going to be firing my guns again in a, uh, for, qu for quite a bit. So uh, while I have the chance here, I can get two salvos off like that. And then I disable the, the rapid fire again. And by now I'm behind the island and I couldn't actually have shot at my target anymore or let's say for example it's a low health target something like that you know so in very specific sit situations is when you're going to use that there's no such thing as a cooldown or anything uh, or or a number of charges it's just a switch that switches between fire two salvos in rapid succession and then wait a long time for reload cumulatively longer than if you had fired two salvos individually but you get two salvos out very quickly so if you have to kill something on the quick or you're about to go undetected or you're about to go behind an island and you know for the next 20 odd seconds you're not going to shoot again then this gives you the option of uh of firing again so that it, of, of getting more shells on on target so it's a situational uh, it's a very situational skill but it can be quite useful at times so like for example if you uh, if you're about, if a target's smoking up, and you're you know that you're about to lose contact, right? A light cruiser smokes up somewhere, and you're about to lose contact, and uh, you you quickly you quickly toggle, and you get a one and a two salvos out, uh, targeted on um, targeted on the uh, the light cruiser. Uh, the last thing uh, the last thing I want to mention. Uh, you you see this button over here, and actually this is something I'm going to address here as well because so many people have asked about this. Uh, how do I enable this? Uh, the manual fire. Uh, it's in the settings. Um, you see the auto lock option down here. You can switch that between enable, then it's always on. So if I set that to enable, I don't have the button. If I'm going down here and set the auto lock to disable, I'm going to have the block button either, but now I'm not locking onto anything ever, which is not something you want. So what you want is this one usually, because that allows you to disable auto lock and to enable auto lock when you need it again. Now, uh, generally, uh, especially with uh, armor piercing heavy things, I would I would usually aim at uh, say deck plating for stuff. And uh, if you are on manual aim, uh, the if you're locked on, 
then the second then both salvos will go into where your uh, where the lock on stays but if you're on manual aim and you're passing then the first salvo will go where you want it to but you have to keep the tar you have to keep the reticule on target for the second salvo that's just something to something to remember anyway i think uh, we spent long enough with that particular mechanic so let's get out of here and uh, let us uh, to, for today look at the uh, look at the asturias now this ship uh, did not exist. The details here say something about uh, Italian plans uh, on Franco's uh, Spain after the Civil War. But yeah, yeah Spain did not have uh, heavy cruisers past the Canarias class. So uh, that that is an an imaginary heavy cruiser. But if they said Spanish, if they said Italian, so I figured well I will compare it to an Italian ship. And uh, let us take a look at the Asturias. Well, first we will look at the Canarias because that uh, that one we already have in the game. See how they differ. Now both of them get sonar, but that's about where it ends. Canarias, obviously, being a tier six ship and significantly lighter armored. But what we want to look at are the guns. Now the Canarias gets uh, different guns, earlier guns, and uh, they don't do quite the same amount of damage. What we can see here with the Asturias is that the armor piercing on these guns is significant. That's almost a thousand damage at tier seven on 203 millimeter guns. These guns hit and they hit hard. Uh, the Canarias for some obscure reason in game got secondaries but uh, didn't get any torpedoes. <laughs> so uh, uh, even though they are based, uh, they were based on, oh don't let me lie, what was it? Was it a town class? I'm not sure, could have been a town class uh, British light cruiser design and uh, definitely had torpedoes but uh, in terms of guns uh, we see that there's a significant difference between difference between the premium and the tech tree here at tier 7 more so than you would usually assume so let's compare her to the Zara then because there we have an Italian an actual Italian ship now obviously this the skill set is completely different but that's not what we're here for so hull wise quite uh, quite comparable uh, the, Sp the Spanish ships are quick. Uh, she's got the same. The, the, she got the same relatively uh, poor turning rate. So it's you can definitely see the, the sort of Italian heritage that they've pulled in there, of a slim, long, uh, very fast, but not very maneuverable ship. But these things do a. Uh, <laughs> she does a 34 knot base speed, which is very, which is very nice. Like I said, the guns uh, are actually fun on this tier 7. They do have a 10 second base reload, which is not too terrible. The range is a bit on the short side, but she does get the scout plane, which does extend the range. So that's a good thing. And with 966, these guns are hitting almost as hard on the armor piercing that the Zara hits on the semi armor piercing, with the difference being that this is actual armor piercing. <laughs> so these are very nice, uh, very nice armor piercing guns. Uh, the high explosive is pretty forgettable. Uh, like you would do that, you would do that, you do that damage on I think some of the better, um, some of the better 150 mils. That six percent fire chance is okay, but uh, usually uh, unless you're shooting at battleships and are trying to set fires, you would even in if you're not trying to set fires, even at battleships, it's often better to just stick with the armor piercing. It's just so good. Uh, we have torpedo tubes, and we actually get um, I would almost argue better torpedo loadout than on the Zara because we get an additional tube, so two quads. Uh, the, she, the, she gets the same excellent uh, to, torpedo launch angles that we're used to from the French and from the Italian cruisers. She gets a longer range with 8.4 kilometers, and while the, uh, the base damage isn't quite as high, again, we get an extra tube, and we have a faster reload on those. So uh, these are good torpedoes. Unfortunately, that's where it ends, because the AA is absolutely positively dreadful on these ships, which is surprising, because uh, they do get the defensive AA skill. But uh, don't let that fool you. The AA is terrible on the Asturias. <laughs> so, uh, and the concealment isn't, isn't bad, but it's not as good as on the Italians either. So it's a, it's a slightly different slant than the Italian. It's, 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 very, it's very similar in terms of maneuverability and... Uh, the guns slap <laughs> and the torpedoes do as well with the armor piercing and with the yeah with the torpedoes so how have i how can we set this ship up what is um, what is special here well we get the crew uh, nothing nothing great in the elite bonus 
Uh, you can either go for Cruiser Modernization, which gives you 2% hit points, which is nice to have. Uh, large caliber AA damage is usually completely useless because the AA is completely useless on this ship. Uh, and this is tier 7, so uh, you're not in joking territory anymore. Um, the main battery traverse is good to have because the main battery is a bit sluggish, but I am sticking with the advanced turret here. And that with that we get to uh, 10.8 degrees. So turret traverse, not so much. This is Japanese levels of terrible. You can get uh, you can get two camouflages. You can get the historical camo, which is the the exact same that we found on the Canarias, which is basically a grey ship. I mean, this is what the ship looks like without the camo. This is what the ship likes with the camo. It's a slightly different color of grey, but with big ass Spanish flags plastered on the side, so nobody can say they didn't know what they were shooting at. Um, and uh, the historical camo gives us main battery of range, which is good because we're lacking that. Torpedo damage reduction, which is completely useless. Large caliber AA range, which doesn't help us. And max traverse speed, which is kind of nice, but not uh, necessarily something that like, would buff any of the strength of these. I would have much preferred to get um, to get dispersion here, and disp something like dispersion and concealment. Or you could get the funky wavy water dragon camo, which gives you a range, dispersion, and then AA. Well, AA again, pretty useless on the ship because um, the base the base values are just too low. Uh, I don't like the looks of it, <laughs> but I would I would probably say um, out of the two, it's the less worse of them. Honestly, you don't have to get the historical camo on this ship, but uh, I'll play with I'll play with one anyway, um, uh, just to uh, just to to show what we're doing here. Equipment wise, uh, you could you could throw another main battery mod one in there, and I wouldn't fault you. But for me, these are um, not ships that necessarily engage at point blank because they are fast but not very maneuverable. So oftentimes I find it better to play positionally and just do uh, ranged, especially with the uh, the scout plane, ranged AP spam. So I actually went with the main battery mode two, and uh, I've compromised here on the steering. You may as well also use concealment. Both are very, very valid, I think, in, in terms of setup here. Now I do have to return, where did I put him? Um, uh, where is he? Oh, it, has, it had to be one of those. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I actually reused them here. Okay, let's bring them back. Um, so skills wise, uh, I am going with the battlefield support for the extra AA. And okay, before we, let's have a quick look on the Andalusia and, uh, Andalusia and see if that actually makes sense. Because you have both sonar and AA. The Andalusia gets a better AA, it's a def AA2. And uh, that thing still doesn't have great AA, it's still terrible. But uh, I feel like it's worth doing that, uh, specifically and also because you have the sonar. So you don't give up a huge amount, you give up the exploit weakness, which given that you have a very low flooding chance on the torpedoes and your HE is positively dreadful, you'll mostly be firing AP anyway. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't that you can't benefit from uh, from from burning from ships that have been set on fire by other people. But uh, having the recon skill is quite nice because it does allow you to uh, you know engage a little bit more aggressively in areas where you would expect torpedoes to be. And in that regard, I may as well just go with the full support cruiser setup here. But I wouldn't fault you if you'd said, you know what, I'm just going to go left here. I'm going to go torpedo alert. I don't really care about the sonar. I'm gonna get victorious charge and exploit weakness. That would be a totally viable setup as well. Personally, this is my support cruiser player bias, I'd, I'd say. Uh, you don't have a precise aim, so you can go for an HP build and use both the survivalist and the fully prepared. Uh, you don't get smoke screens, so you can get the extinguisher skill. And uh, you don't have a speed boost or anything. Definitely APCS on these ships. And uh, you could go Giant Hunter, uh, you can go Horizontal Protection Deck, but it's not going to make a massive difference because your deck armor is not going to be very thick, so uh, a 10% additional is not going to help you an awful lot. Uh, but uh, out of the three, I think they're all, valid. they're all valid to take. Anyway, the first game I will be playing in the ship, uh, I will only have a... Uh, I will only have a, a, a level seven commander and regular consumables, and in the second and uh, no historical camo. In the second game, we do the 
fully fully decked out. But I don't think it makes a massive difference on these ships. Uh, we in uh, APCS is a very nice skill to have, though. Anyway, I think I've been talking for long enough. Let's get into some gameplay. In the first game, we find ourselves in a tier 8 game facing Black Veneto, Roma, California, Nagato, Atone, Tallinn, and Nakatsuki, and playing Domination on Haven, which is a fun map. Uh, against destroyers, surprisingly, especially without the APCS, uh, the, uh, the armor piercing is pretty good actually. And uh, even if, if you fire, even if you're firing at battleships, I would still argue that using the armor piercing is, is is generally a safe choice. So look at the torpedo angles, Italian torpedo angles, very good forward. You don't need to broadside. Uh, the gun turret, turret traverse is absolutely dreadful, and obviously you only get eight guns. But uh, the dispersion can be quite on point, actually, to the to the to to the state that sometimes you have to actually manually aim because it is too precise that the auto aim pulls it down somewhere where you don't want it to be. But anyway, uh, very fast ship, so I'm going to be heading into a D cap, and there are the Tunis scout planes f uh, sailing over sea, checking if anyone's coming this way. Friendly destroyer is going for B cap. That is often a, a recipe di for disaster, but. Um, I've seen enough teams on the north and spawn derping around to, make, to no longer make that statement that it is guaranteed to be an absolute disaster. But usually there's a cruiser somewhere there, uh, happily dealing with enemy destroyer. But look at that, we're taking B cup for old. <laughs> so yeah, sure, why not? We'll take three capture circles if you can hold it. Uh, that uh, that also often means that something is coming uh, that something's coming a long way around. So if you see, and there I am already detected. That's the Tony. Uh, so there are torpedoes in the water. Hydra up. Uh, so if you see this, that often means that uh, some of your team, some of the enemy team is derping around on the northern side. Yeah, and there's the Roma already. But uh, Tone is uh, attracting for too much attention for his uh, for his taste, and I am getting shot at by California, which is not something you want to you want to be. So I'm backing off a little and uh, just keeping an eye on the Tone, and definitely. And now I'm using the. Um, using the rapid fire because I am trying to go uh, defensive and that means the Tone is going to be out of my range and I'm not going to have anything to fire at for uh, for a bit until I get back to, until I get back to uh, to you know seeing that Roma over there. yeah yeah I've seen him I've got torpedoes ready for him but that's a situation where you can use the rapid fire because that allowed me to get two salvos off at the Tone uh, let's get the scout plane up to see if we can spot the if it can spot the Roma I don't if we, I don't actually know if that works but I would like to have a scout on, there's the Roma, uh, and uh, torpedoes away. And then I'll leave that to the Luca Tarigo, and uh, I will start dealing with that Nagato over there from long range. I don't want to get into a close range engagement for, with the Nagato, so let's just slow right down, make sure we're not sitting broadside onto Roma. And yes, these armor piercing shells, they, uh, they can hurt even battleships, and you don't necessarily need to weak spot target. Uh, three torpedoes on the Roma. But you can um, uh, you can uh, full pen uh, battleship decks without too much trouble. So going for ma for the manual aim here on the Nagato, and yeah, the ones that hit the deck are doing full penetration, so quite reliably. You don't need to bow stern our, uh, aim with these armor piercing shells. So, uh, but you can obviously. It's it's not uh, it's not a problem per se. And now I'm I'm sort of uh, playing carefully here with the two battleships around. <laughs> and helping out. Surprisingly, the Roma is still alive. Uh, Luca, what did you do over there? Anyway, uh, one of our battleships there is over at B Cup, very alone and unsupported. We have lost one battleship and uh, it, look, uh, it seems that, yes, we also have lost B Cup. So we're behind on points at this stage. And that means I am gonna have to head over there and help clearing out these two battleships on the, from the northern spawn. Usually that isn't that successful because normally these two are unsupported. My team should not have this many problems. There we go. That's a good torpedo hit on the Nagato. So uh, threat threat from the left is uh, negligible. Let's see if we can finish off the Nagato. Uh, and I have got the rapid fire setting here, but the shells actually fall a bit short, uh, most of them, which means uh, I have not managed to do quite as much damage as I, as I thought against uh, the Nagato. But now I'm committed and now I have to wait for the reload, <laughs> which takes a while. Uh, who am I going to shoot at? Nagato or Roma? Both are in low health, both need to die. Uh, neither of them is looking at me. Uh, Nagato, you're the, you're the easier target. So shots out at the Nagato and sometimes the dispersion says nope. <laughs> 
<laughs> but we've almost gotten them, and in this ship I am fast enough. And they are sailing out of torpedo range, so I mean I'm dropping them just in case, but it's unlikely that they're going to run into them. Uh, but I'm already orienting myself towards the other uh, towards the other half of the, the the map because I am fast enough that I can still get over there while still lending a little bit of a helping hand to my team. And there's still the Luca and the battleship out there, so I can use my last scout plane just to extend my range and get a couple more shots. Parting shots on that Nagato. My torpedoes, uh, unsurprisingly, have run out of steam because these battleships were sailing away from me, and now even the Nagato is out of my range. So, okay, what do we got? Uh, Charles Martel and an Akatsuki. Uh, yeah, uh, Charles Martel, if you're this close to an Akatsuki, that is not going to end well. Yeah. <laughs> It's not, that was uh, unsurprising. Now, I am expecting that the Akatsuki is going undetected. Yes, and he is. That's why I have the... Uh, I have the a rapid fire enabled because I am not planning to go. Ow! <laughs> that was semi armor piercing coming from the other way. That's the Veneto. I, I was not planning to um, to be able to shoot at anything because the Veneto. I I'm not rushing the Veneto, and uh, the Akatsuki is uh, is gone undetected. And there is the Tone in for a Tone, a very unpleasant position because uh, Hydra up. And if he goes on this side of the map, oh, there's California as well. If he no, he's he's turning away. But there should be Tony torpedoes in the water anyway. Okay, and there's the Akatsuki. There comes California. Fire in, and I've got I still got the Veneto on the other side. So I do have to keep an eye on on either side. But I do want to, uh, that Tony finished. So rapid fire up and see if we can get two salvos out to finish the Tony, and then go defensive against. Uh, oh, just not the defensive against California while making sure that we keep the island between myself and and Veneto. So that's the sort of situation where uh, if you think you've got a shot to, to, kill, to kill an, an enemy ship, then uh, you can use the... and now I have to get out of here because I think Veneto is gonna hurt me otherwise. Uh, and m my team's kind of bottled up into one capture circle, so we do need to make something happen here. We're killed behind, we're cut behind. And I, said, I still can't get that toner to die. <laughs> and he's gone undetected. No! <laughs> All right, I've got other problems. There's a Talon. Okay, let's deal with Talon. Hello, Mr. Talon. Uh, you appear to have um, very much overcommitted. Uh, torpedoes out there, the California, because I don't need torpedoes against the Talon. I can just enable the, uh, the rapid fire. We've got 10 seconds left. Rapid fire out at the Talon. Can I get the Talon? Yep, I can. And I don't think we have time to torpedo the California, but... That took down the Talon, although unfortunately it still wasn't enough. If I had managed to catch that Tony earlier, it would have been a, a win. But unfortunately, as it is, uh, we end up in a defeat. But uh, uh, this is sort of giving you a bit of an impression on the playstyle that you have with these ships uh, and how you can use the rapid fire ability uh, in situations where it makes sense. So you definitely need to watch where you're going, but you are a very fast ship and uh, you are perfectly capable of uh, of zipping from one end to the other uh, of the map to the other. So, of course, we're playing Domination in Haven again, but this time with a fully decked out uh, Asturias. We are in a 5v5 against, again, it's a tier 8 game, Enterprise, Poltava, Colorado, Albemarle, and an Akatsuki. Uh, two of the... and a Colorado! <laughs> uh, one of the Colorados and the Monarch are bots. And in, in typical fashion, I have forgotten to load up the premium heals. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, you, I, would, I should have been able to heal a bit, back, uh, a bit more back. But, uh, yeah, I have kind of forgotten. Spawning in the same place as well. And, uh, yeah, just remember, just because you have defensive AA doesn't mean you're in an AA cruiser. And the ship is not very good. But that said, you know, it's better to have it <laughs> than not to have it, I guess. Anyway, uh, I would have loved an engine boost instead of the defensive AA on the ship, to be honest, or better better AA base values, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, we are going to rush D, and it looks like this time around the destroyer on the friendly team is going to go for C Cup, uh, especially with a carrier around. You definitely don't want to uh, don't want to rush B because you will be you will be spotted and you will have all the things shooting at you. Although, I mean, he doesn't know that I'm on this side and I'm the only cruiser in here. Otherwise, it's just battleships. Anyway, making use of the good base speed, taking a D cup, and then the plan is to head out into C cup and get the guns on the starboard side just to be ready in case anybody of the of the enemy team is going north. Uh, we are going to be carrier scouted in a second here. Yep, there we are. 
Uh, definitely up just um, because I've got four of them. I might as well. And that is the bot monarch. So, uh, and there's the Albemarle as well. So there are likely torpedoes in the water, which means I do not wish to uh, to get any closer to this. But uh, I am having a fully broadsiding Albemarle. So rapid fire up and two salvos out, torpedoes away. And then I'm going to get myself behind the island. And that's why I'm using the rapid fire. There come the torpedoes. That's why I've got the sonar running so I can see these coming. Uh, that's why I've got the I've sent the rapid fire because right now I'm I can't shoot at anything anyway so I might as well just use the time to reload and uh, as you can see we have not shot any planes down but uh, uh, torpedoes and yeah of course you can't blame the Albemarle he couldn't know because the Spanish cruisers aren't out yet that I actually have torpedoes so uh, torps out at the bot monarch and uh, friendly bot Gneisen now is doing <laughs> running speed <laughs> this is blitz doesn't have uh, doesn't have any effect. Uh, and yeah, that was the kind of trollish dispersion that you sometimes get. Uh, Monarch uh, bot is twisting and turning, but it's not going. It's not going to be able to avoid all the torpedoes. And this is what you can do if you hit the deck, uh, the deck of a battleship with these armor-piercing shells. That is a lot of damage. And if you're just aiming too low, you're hitting the belt because of auto aim. So again, manual aim in these kind of situations really, really helps. Anyway, uh, Aki. Uh, do you need help with the bot Colorado? That's a full health bot Colorado. I don't think Aki has the firepower to, to one-shot that thing. And bots can be quite nasty. So uh, manual aim up at the deck of the Colorado this time. Uh, shots out. Just remember if you're using the... And that was disappointing. If you're using the rapid fire, you have to keep, uh, you, you have to keep on target. Uh, Aki gets torpedoes away. Uh, she, Colorado is flooding. And... Uh, uh, that uh, that should yeah with the help of the carrier that should work out so i think we can forget about the colorado uh yeah he's dead uh then we can retake the capture circle and begin shooting at the poltava get me a bit of a better angle and uh, i am i am aware of that akatsuki over there and yeah that's what we would like to see there's the akatsuki so careful with torpedoes through the center channel there and shots out at poltava poltava goes undetected <laughs> I didn't know these things were that sneaky and shoots back at me so a dive under the shells yep uh, good engines on these on these ships as well and uh, now we have a Katsuki so sonar up against potential to oh and he goes undetected dang it uh, there he is okay uh, detected again rapid fire up and see if we can uh, get two salvos out if you on if you only have half your your guns available then uh, obviously only half of your guns and he turns away so uh, only half of your guns are going to be able to actually get on um, get the second salvo off because if the other ones are either reloading or not on target yet they're not going to fire so uh, now I'm, I'm waiting for my first turn okay that's a dead Akatsuki and uh, wait did I miss? how did I miss that? Ech. okay friendly Aki has taken him out all good and I think, yeah, we, we pulled a kill ahead. We're still 10 points behind because of capture circles. But uh, Magi is coming up. Poltava is coming under air attack. And um, yes, yes, I know he's right there. I'm coming. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm on my way. I'm just helping the carrier with my defensive AA, not shooting even the fighters down. I uh, could use a scout plane about now just to get the range on the Poltava. But now we're, we'll just... Um, uh, we'll just I still haven't shot plane down. This is with def oh there there I've shot the fighter down. This is with the defensive AA active by the way. <laughs> and, uh, chasing down the Poltava. And hello, Mr. Enterprise. Uh, let's see what we can do here. Uh, still helping out with the enemy carrier fighters. Uh, not not shooting them down, but doing what I can here. And I'll try to get my turrets around, but we can probably torpedo drop the Enterprise and keep... There we go. Uh, I've shot one plane down so far. Uh, probably get torpedoes at the end. No, Enterprise is in a full turn. So I'm going to wait to get my, my guns around. And uh, enable the rapid reload and see if we can... Because the Enterprise is now going to get torpedoed. So at this distance, a rapid reload up, shots out. And uh, torpedoes out, and then we'll wait. We'll wait for the uh, for the reload for the Poltava. I just wanted to do as much damage to the Enterprise as I could uh, before uh, before things. Uh, and Poltava shoots one of my guns down. That's unfortunate because that means the next uh, the next salvo only will get uh, will get 12 shells out, 
instead of 16. So there they go. Can we get the Enterprise? Just not. So Akizuki take it out and Poltava survives on like one hit point or something. If he hadn't shot off my gun, I would have had the Poltava here with the rapid re with the salvo fire. But uh, as it stands, uh, Aki takes him out as well. And uh, there we go. So um, that leaves one battleship. We've got all the caps. So I think uh, despite the fact that, uh, that Akizuki is almost still full health. So we're all good. Yeah, keep your Akizukis alive. They're useful. Um, yeah, Spanish cruisers, uh, uh, especially the Asturias. Uh, this is a good ship. Reminds me very much of the Zara, playstyle-wise. And um, it's uh, you, you've you've got pretty usable torpedoes with great angles. You've got a fast ship. You've got hard-hitting armor piercing, uh, which does a lot of damage if you can get the, if you can get the full pens done, even against battleships. So um, that's a I'm not sure where that Colorado is going, if he's going forward or backwards. I'm just going to send it out just in case I can, because we've only got 10 seconds left, so I'm eh, overshot. It's fine. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the gimmick with the salvo fire, you have to use it sparingly. So don't leave that on all the time, because it leaves you really vulnerable, because you have a very long reload, and you actually get, you get a lower DPM with the salvo fire on, or with the rapid fire, whatever it's called. Get a lower DPM with that, so be aware of that. Uh, it's only for specific situations when you know that you're going to stop shooting anyway, because there's some, an island in the way, you're going undetected, uh, you know, stuff like that, or you're, you're, you're turning away, and you just want to send more shells down range. But uh, this is a this is a good ship. I enjoy this cruiser very much. Uh, the AA could be a bit better, honestly, because <laughs> the def AA feels kind of useless if even with def AA up, the whole battle you only shoot one plane down. But um, uh, it's, a, it's still a tier 7, so, you know, uh, have to make some compromises there. But this this is, this is was a very fun cruiser, and I'm enjoying that mechanic uh, as a, uh, a sort of uh, very tactical thing that you can use in games in, in certain scenarios. Uh, that's it for me today. I think it's been, been keeping you here for long enough. Uh, the We are going to be looking at the other tiers, uh, the tier 5 and the tier 9 still. So uh, I will have the individual reviews for these coming up. And as soon as I get my hands on the, uh, the, oh, the even tiers and they come out of embargo, then I'll be looking at those as well. Uh, although I am still on holiday, so uh, not before May. <laughs> this is part of the pre-recording. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody. And uh, hasta la vista, baby.